Oh, hi there. Just trying to get, oh, there we go. Having a little bit of an issue with the iPad today. Anyway, I thought I'd have a little chat doing laundry and that kind of thing. I know last time you were here I was doing laundry, I'm pretty sure. But it's Wednesday and it's laundry day and I've already been out. It's gorgeous out there. <laughs> Went and watched the women do yoga in the park for a while, and then uh, came back here to throw my laundry in the dryer and thought I'd spend a little bit of time here. So uh, I want to talk today about what I mentioned earlier about having had polio at, at such a, a young age, at age three. So we're going to get into that. One of the things that I had to learn uh, at one point in my life <laughs> And it was with the when I was working for the Canadian Paraplegic Association. The whole concept of before and after with a disability, uh, with a physical disability. Uh, one of the uh, niceties of uh, having had polio at such a young age, I don't really have any before. I don't remember any before. Uh, I've had numerous people throughout my life, you know, uh, tell me. Oh, how unfortunate, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, from my perspective, this, my life is normal. This is all I've ever known. So when people say things like that to me, they're coming from a perspective uh, that I don't really understand because walking on crutches uh, was always normal to me. That, that was my life. It was everybody else's opinion that... Uh, tried to lead me down the path of this this isn't normal well you know it is normal and with my disability uh, you know let me take that back my disability is really about your attitude uh, I had too many people telling me when I was younger you're disabled you can't do this you can't do that well fuck them all I never listened to people I did what I wanted to do uh, <laughs> to my detriment at times, but I wasn't going to let something like crutches get in the way. In fact, for the first 20 years of my life, I had a chip on my shoulder that was downright dangerous. Uh, I mentioned the Paraplegic Association. Well, that's when I sort of really looked at this because I used to get so frustrated with some of the, the people I worked with. Uh, who were letting the frustration of what life was like before get in their way or get it you know get in their way uh, to moving forward and I I have a much better appreciation for that frustration now than I did then but it took me a while to to sort of get my head wrapped around that because I'd get so pissed off with some of these people that uh, you know it happened get over it move on uh, and I know it's not that simple, but uh, not having to have dealt with the before aspect, uh, it, it just seemed natural to me. And not having listened to everybody tell me what I could and couldn't do also worked for me. Some people would disagree with that, but uh, only because I was such a little shithead as a kid. Uh, but having not really knowing before or knowing anything about before, this is really normal to me. Now having become wheelchair dependent changed that a little bit, but not a lot. I must say also I was very lucky uh, to have a family, uh, I think I mentioned at one point, I'm, I'm one of six kids, I'm the second oldest in a family of six. So we were raised, uh, you know, we, we came from the farm into the city, that's where I caught polio, and city life became our way. So we, my father worked hard to, to raise us from what I would say would have been considered lower middle income at that point to middle middle income. We were never rich, but we never went without things. But with five other siblings, uh, my folks didn't really um, treat treat us all that differently. I was never really uh, allowed to be be disabled at home, which was fine with me. Uh, with that said, by the time I was 16, I'd spent eight years in the children's hospital, so my relationship with my family was always uh, a little different. Uh, 
my family was more uh, those people in the children's hospital because at that time about 75 percent were polio so uh, having a disability in the children's hospital was never an issue I mean everybody there had a disability so in, in some ways my my comfort level uh, for home was at the children's and not with my family. The uh, limited amount of time I did spend with my family, to their credit, they didn't treat me like I was disabled, which which was good because I never behaved like I was disabled. And uh, oh, got to go take my drawing out of the laundry room, uh, but I'll be back in a few. All right, hang tough. Thanks. Well. One more weekly task out of the way. Um, I was mentioning. Sorry, I need a mint. In the process of quitting smoking, I have been for about the last year, and I find Scotch mints helps. Um, as I was saying about the children's healthcare and how they dealt with disabilities was very different back then. Uh, there was no such thing as inclusions, access, anything like this. This was the 50s. So you spent a lot of time in the children's hospital, especially polio. Uh, orthopedics was really into its early years of development. Uh, my doctor, who I loved dearly, passed, I think he just passed away in the last year, uh, was an ex um, pilot with the Canadian Armed Forces, or what was then the, what do they call them, the, can't remember anymore, uh, been so long ago. So there was always new surgical procedures coming up that, that he wanted to try, and I tended to be one of his favorite patients for that, in part because I, I really enjoyed being in the children's hospital, so it was never an issue. Uh, if he mentioned a surgery, and at that point I was in, when I came to Calgary, I was in a back brace, hip band, leg braces, and I just wanted out of those. Now, most of those, I was down to one leg brace by the early 60s, and a lot of that was due to a number of the surgeries uh, Murphy had done. So I was always more than happy to go into the children's. You'd go in generally around the end of August, so you were there for the beginning of the school year, and you'd stay for the year. Now, you might have two or three surgeries in that period, but you would stay there. You'd get out again in June, so you're home for the summer, and that was about it. It would not be uncommon, because there was schooling there, it would not be uncommon post-surgery for a nurse to be on one side of you giving you a shot of Demerol, while the teacher's in your room on the other side giving you your lesson plan that day for math. That's the way the children's worked then. It was easier to incorporate that there because hospitals are natural born educators. They do education there. Today with inclusion, that's one of my issues, uh, schools were never designed to be healthcare centers and yet inclusion combines the two. Hospital absorbed that better. I'll save my thoughts on inclusion for a, a different post. I just wanted to close this one down by, uh, you know, hospitals were very different back then, as I, as I indicated. That's the way we were dealt with. We were kept busy. We had school. If we weren't doing school in our room, there was classrooms. The only time you did school in your room was post surgery. Things were very structured. Our days were kept very busy. Every evening there was different events. We had scouts, brownies, guides, come, the whole nine yards. So uh, visiting, there wasn't a lot of time for visiting. Your parents were allowed to visit twice a week, Wednesdays from 2.30 to 3.30. We'd get out of school early. And Sundays from uh, 2 to 4. And that was only your parents. Your siblings could only visit once a month, and that was by prearrangement. So uh, the exception to that was post-surgery, where your parents could be there a little bit more. But, you know, you, you didn't see your, your family a lot unless you were at home, which also set up interesting dynamics for the way I relate to my siblings. But that, was an, that was a big difference back then. Uh, of course, that doesn't happen that way anymore. But uh, that was health care then. That's not healthcare now. It's pretty obvious, uh, but it it worked. It worked well for me. I was I never was begrudging of it, and but that's that's how the system has changed, and that's not a long change. That's only you know uh, forty fifty years. So uh, 
I'll get back to you on more of that at a later date. Now that uh, my laundry's done, I'm going to change my bedding, get dressed, and probably go find a nice patio bar and maybe have a, uh, a beer and clamato juice because it's that kind of day. It's a really hot day. want to make want to make the best of it this kind of weather. The word I was looking for earlier, he was in the Air Force. Dr. Murphy had been in the Air Force, and I drew a blank on that. Anyway, have a good day, folks. I'll chat with you later. Bye for now.